All right, welcome back. In the two previous videos, we looked at assembly of the prokaryotic 70S ribosome and the eukaryotic 80S ribosome. Now, we talk about elongation. It's kind of a cool process, in my opinion. All right, when we're talking about prokaryotic elongation, we have proteins like 2 and TS, all right? Eukaryotic elongation is going to function in a very similar way. The proteins are going to have different names, but overall the process is going to be same, the same. All right. So what's going to happen is we have another tRNA that's going to come into the A site. Okay, that's what this tRNA is right here in the A. All right. Now, before the tRNA is able to come into that site, see right here we have the tRNA amino acid 2. That's what the AA2 is, the blue circle. What you'll see is that it has to pick up a protein called 2. And 2 is a G protein, meaning it binds GTP, and it can hydrolyze that GTP. So initially what's going to happen is that, that tRNA with the amino acid 2 and the protein 2 GTP is going to come into the A site. Now what you'll notice when it initially comes in, that amino acid 2 is really not close to the formal methionine. It's not next to the, the initial amino acid there. So you can't polymerize them yet. But what happens is 2 is a G protein that has GTP. So what it can do is 2 can hydrolyze that GTP to GDP. And when it hydrolyzes that GTP, it releases an enormous amount of energy, which causes a, a huge change in conformation. And you'll notice what happens is the 2 is ejected. But also, look, the A is forced into a conformation such that the amino acid AA2 is next to the formal methionine, okay? So it goes from this conformation to putting that amino acid right next to the other amino acid. That's going to facilitate the uh, polymerization, the formation of the peptide bond, which is what we'll look at here in a minute. But when we hydrolyze that GTP, the 2 protein is going to be ejected. What's going to happen is the TS, another protein, is going to cause dislocation of the GDP, and you have a TSTU complex and then GTP is going to come back onto 2 and displace the TS. So now you have another freshly made 2 GTP that's able to bind to another incoming tRNA that has an amino acid, okay? And you just repeat this cycle. So now you have this methionine or formal methionine in prokaryotes very, very, very close in proximity to that second amino acid still on the tRNA and the A site. So here's what happens. Notice here's the P site, here's the A site. This reaction of formation of the peptide bond is going to be facilitated by ribosomal RNA that is catalytic. This catalytic rRNA is going to be called peptidyl transferase, and it has a mechanism. So here's what happens. Here's the tRNA in the P site with the formal methionine. Here's the tRNA in the A site with the amino acid 2. The amino acid 2's amine is going to attack the ester of the first amino acid in there, which is formal methionine. What's going to happen from there is it's going to facilitate acyl substitution. We're going to get the formation of this tetrahedral intermediate, and then that tetrahedral intermediate collapses back down. What that's going to do is it's going to take the amino acid right here, which is formal methionine, and move it onto the amino acid that's in the A site. So notice, instead of just having the adenosine right here in the amino acid 2, you have adenosine, amino acid 2, and formal methionine. And so the peptide chain will kind of grow out from out in this direction. Okay. Also notice now the tRNA that's in the P site no longer has an amino acid. Okay. That amino acid has been moved onto the amino acid that's already on the tRNA in the A site. All right. So it might take you a few looks to see exactly what's going on, but if you kind of follow the arrows, you can probably see it. The amino acid in the A site, its amine attacks the, the uh, carbonyl of the formal methionine ester bond of the tRNA in the P site. It's going to initially link in an intermediate like this, and then this tetrahedral intermediate collapses, and this amino acid moves on to amino acid 2, all right, as you see right here. And this is your setup now. So now you have a tRNA in the P site that's got nothing on it, and a tRNA in the A site that has the growing peptide chain. Well, we're going to have to get rid of that empty tRNA and then move the tRNA with the amino acids over one. All right. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do something called ribosome translocation. And in prokaryotes, it is done through a protein called EFG. 
In eukaryotes, it's the same kind of concept. This is done by a different protein, all right? All right, so this is where we left off. We have this empty tRNA in the P site. We have an, a tRNA in the A site that has a peptide chain on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a protein called EFG that is a G protein also. It has GTP. Now look here. When we have this EF2, and remember from the previous video, or previous slide I should say, um, this 2 protein with GTP was able to interact with the tRNA, with the amino acid. That's what this is. This is EF2. Here's the tRNA. The structure of EFG, this protein right here, resembles the complex of 2 and the tRNA. So much so that this EFG is able to fit into um, it's able to fit into one of these three sites on the ribosome. And what it does is initially the EFG, GTP, is going to attach itself to the tRNA in the A site. All right. However, what it does is it hydrolyzes that GTP. And what do we know about hydrolysis of nucleotides? Well, when it hydrolyzes that GTP, it releases a huge amount of energy. Now notice, initially we have that tRNA in the A site and the tRNA in the P site. Initially what's going to happen is when that EFG sticks on there and hydrolyzes that GTP, it sort of acts like a wedge and it forces all the other tRNAs to move one site to the left in this case. So the tRNA that was in the A site is now in the P site and the tRNA that's now in the P site is now in the E site. All right. And now the EFG GDP, since it hydrolyzed the GTP, is now in the A site. So what the EFG GTP does is it acts as a molecular wedge. It basically wedges all the other tRNAs over one. Okay? And then once it hydrolyzes that GTP and becomes GDP, the EFG wedge leaves. And now you effectively have everything translocated over one space or one active site in the ribosome and you have an empty A site now. So now we have the P site with the growing peptide chain, thus the name P, it's the peptidyl site, it's the site of the growing peptide chain. E is the exit site, this tRNA will then leave, it's exits, and A will accept a new incoming tRNA or an aminoacyl tRNA. And so this process is going to repeat over and over and over and over again. What you'll see next is you'll see another amino acyl tRNA come into the A site. Then what we saw, remember, was the 2 protein that's on that incoming amino acyl tRNA. It's going to hydrolyze GTP, change conformation. Then you're going to see the amino acid or this, in the case is peptide transferred onto the tRNA in the A site. And you're going to get initially a growing amino acid chain on the tRNA in the A site. But then when you get this EFG protein that comes in, it's going to wedge everything over one. And then ultimately you'll have a tRNA in the P site with a growing peptide chain. And that's what you see right here. It's very hard to describe in words with pictures, which is why I have a very uh, descriptive PowerPoint presentation on this that I did a video on and I'll put this next in the playlist. Okay, But suffice to say this peptide chain is now growing on the tRNA and the P site. Now in the next video we're going to talk about how protein synthesis or translation is terminated. Okay, And that's done through release factors. All right? So hopefully this made a little bit of sense. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.